Previously. It's time for glitches in the first generation Pokemon games, part 1. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you'll be notified when Gen 1 glitches part 2 comes out. Oh, I wish I hadn't overslept. So, uh, you know what they say, better six months late than never, right? They, they don't, they don't say that, do they? Well, anyways, let's hop right back in with some more glitches in the first generation Pokemon games. So we're gonna start out in Safari Zone, which during normal gameplay is a great place to catch some Pokemon. When it comes to glitches, however, the Safari Zone can be used to break this game in half. To start us off, head into the Safari Zone, leave, and immediately fly to Cinnabon Island. Walk to the east and surf up and down along the coast. Instead of the usual water Pokemon like Magikarp, Poliwag, and more, you'll find Safari Zone Pokemon instead. Since you don't have a step limit, capture those Safari Pokes to your heart's content. Now that's great, but try visiting Old Man in Viridian City before flying to the island. After having him demonstrate how to catch a Pokemon, the walled Pokemon found off the coast of Cinnamon Island will change depending on what the player's name is. If your player name, for example, was a capital A, you would find a level 128 Cold Duck. Near the end of the list for possible names, a lowercase Z or Z will result in a level 185 Oddish instead. I'll show you what happens when you have a single lowercase V as your name. Talk to the old man, see his demonstration, head to the island, and it's missing now. In the previous video, I somehow never brought up Pokemon's most recognizable glitch, so better late than never, right? If you don't know what it is, here's Nintendo's official description of Missing No from the Customer Service Troubleshooting section. Missing No is a programming quirk, and not a real part of the game. When you get this, your game can perform strangely, and the graphics will often become scrambled. The Missing No Pokemon is most often found after you perform the fight Safari Zone Pokemon trick. That makes sense, but what it fails to mention is that there are actually multiple forms of Missing No. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So using an extended version of the Mew glitch, which is something I covered in part 1, it's possible to make any Pokemon appear, which includes non-Pokemon. So follow the steps of the glitch like before, but after defeating a trainer, you need to fight a Pokemon with a special stat that matches the encounter value of the Pokemon you wish to find on Nugget Bridge. So basically, fly back to the mispronunciation island and head into the Pokemon Mansion. In the basement, you have a decent chance of encountering a Ditto. Have your Pokemon get copied, then flee from the fight. Since we let Ditto transform like so, it has a special stat of 182. That means that back on Nugget Bridge, we'll encounter the Kabutops fossil form of Missing No. Not done yet, a special stat of 183 yields the Aerodactyl fossil form of Missing No, and 184 the Spooky Ghost form. Many of the special stats used in this Mew glitch will result in the normal Missing No, which is different in yellow compared to the usual glitch L block. This is Red and Blue's Missing No, which everyone knows, and this is Yellow's. Some stats, like 199 for example, give you a Pokemon that doesn't seem quite right, like this Charizard. His name looks to be sections of his sprite, so I think his name is Wing Wing Foot. His name seems to mess with the text on screen, and seems to use the same palette as your Pokemon. Also, it's not very clear, but this Charizard caused every option to require a few extra A presses to register, which was a bit obnoxious. You can have trainers, gym leaders, and the Elite Four appear, but the last encounter I want to show you uses a special stat of 226 which gives you a battle with Professor Oak himself. The big man starts off with an Electrode, who immediately self-destructs. Nicely done, Professor. His second and last Pokemon is a Weezing, who doesn't do anything productive. When beaten, Oak says, that can't be. And that's it. Uh, a bit disappointing, but it's great to fight Professor Oak himself, and it's quite likely that it was originally planned that you would actually fight him, because in the first generation games, there is unused trainer data for Professor Oak that contains a more fitting team. It consists of a Tauros, Executor, Arcanine, Gyarados, and either Blastoise, Charizard, or Venusaur, all at high levels. If you want to take on Professor Oak yourself, you actually can. Just perform the previously mentioned Old Man Safari Zone glitch with the MN character in the third, fifth, or seventh slot of your player's name. Since I don't feel like showing the ultimate Oak vs. player fight, let's instead look at another huge glitch that somehow did not show up in part 1, the Save Corruption Glitch. To vastly oversimplify this, just after starting a new game and saving and resetting with the right timing, you can actually goof up your menu, toss some items, and teleport straight to the Hall of Fame. That sounds cool, but seeing is believing, so let me step through it real quick like. First, make a new save and name yourself Ash and your rival Blue. Walk down to this specific tile, save, and reset before the yes no menu disappears but before this text box changes. You should be able to continue from the main menu, and if not, restart the process. Open the pause menu, then the Pokemon menu, which should be completely blank. Even though it looks blank, there are actually 11 empty Pokemon slots, but only the first 9 are on screen. Press A on any slot 1 through 9 and swap it with slot 10, then swap slot 11 with slot 9. 
Once that's done, go to the item menu and hold down. When the cursor stops flashing, press A. Now press down, A, down, A. And now find the first master ball and press select on the item right below it. Move down to the next master ball and press select again. Now toss out 68 of this item, which will cause the player to be taken directly to the Hall of Fame after leaving his house. If you do this quickly enough, you'll have a final time of 0-0-0. Zero, zero, zero. Another glitch that utilizes saving is the reasonably named Save Surf Exploit. Walk to a tile of water that's to the east, west, or north of the player. Hold down the d-pad moving towards the water, pause the game, save and reset. When you load back in, without moving, pause and try surfing. The player does, but south into the ground. In most places in the game, this is pretty useless, but if done above the sailor blocking your way to the SS Ann, you can move right through him and enter the SS Ann as late in the game as you want. That's SS fantastic. That pun, however, was awful, I'm sorry. Instead of swimming through a single person, what if we could walk through all walls? Well, you can. I wouldn't bring it up otherwise. First, deposit all Pokemon and poison your last one. There's a point to it, trust me. Make sure it has at least 130 health or so, or otherwise brings in potions to keep it going. Once it's poisoned, head to the Safari Zone, pay to enter, then immediately leave. Say no to ending your Safari Run, then save and reset. When you load back in, try to leave and Nintendo will offer to let you enter the safari from the wrong side. Say no and leave. Now, you're actually on a safari hunt and as such you have 500 steps until you will be returned to the safari's entrance. Fly somewhere with a ledge handy, like Viridian City, and run down the step counter until the bell is about to ding. You want to be in the air over the ledge when the steps run out. When you reappear in the safari entrance room, you'll still be in the air, and your shadow has been replaced with some text. Everything seems normal. You also happen to be able to walk through walls, people, basically anything. If you leave through normal means, your intangibility will stop. And if you go too far out of the room, the game will crash. This is where that poison Pokemon comes into play. Run down its health without leaving the room, and when your character blacks out, they'll be in the world with the ability to walk through anything. Out here, there are a few rules to live by. First, saving and resetting will stop the glitch. Getting challenged by a trainer will work normally, but it also ends the glitch. As well going through any loading zone. Also, if you go too far outside the normal bounds of the game, the game will crash. With all that in mind, feel free to explore. In Fuchsia City, you can talk to the Pokemon who are usually too far away. They say exclamation mark. It seems they're surprised that you even got to them. This glitch is also a great way to understand just how patched together this game is. It's sort of crazy how when you take a single step farther than you're supposed to, things look wrong. Also, when you go somewhere like the Pokemon League, everything looks wrong. This is a great opportunity to finish off with a whole glitch city. Just like the walk through walls glitch, enter the safari zone, save, reset, and exit. You want to head to the cycle road and run down the step counter out here. You'll be returned to the safari entrance and leaving will drop you into Glitchtopia, land of broken sprites. Here you'll be subject to the usual cycle road physics. There's not much you can actually do here, but you can visit the famous gym 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 gym. Unfortunately, saving will not work, so you're limited to running through this broken town. I couldn't escape, but maybe you could. 